It's another marathon video where you can get all of the organizing tips and organize along with me as we go through our pantries together. This video is almost two hours long and it includes multiple different pantry spaces, both when I've moved into those new spaces fresh and how I organize when I'm starting from a clean slate, as well as pantry refreshes and reorganizations if you already have a system in place, how you can work with that. I also have some content where I talk about different tips what decanting means if you are new to the idea of decanting different things in your pantry what types of products you should decant so this video is jam-packed again it is almost two hours so press play organize your pantry along with me i hope you enjoy this long video and get your pantry looking sophisticated Welcome back to another sophisticated organizing video. This is one of my favorite places of all time to organize the pantry, and I know it's something you all love to watch as well. So today I'm gonna do a little bit of a pantry refresh. When I moved into this house in September of 2021, I used pretty much all of the products that I had from my previous apartment and brought them over here, kind of made it work, didn't buy really much of anything new. So I have lived here for over a year now and I think it's time to do a little bit of purchasing some new items to make the organizing a little bit more custom to my space. All of the organizing products I got are from Target and I will share all of the links with you in the description box for the new items that I purchased in my pantry as well as other things that I can find links for. So make sure to check there if you're looking for any of the products that you see in this video. So the first thing that I'm doing is putting some of the new product in the pantry as I'm pulling stuff out. I had a vision in my mind of how I wanted this to work. Of course, before I ordered anything and picked up any of the new organizers, I did some measurements and tried to make sure that they would fit nicely on the pantry shelves here. I do wish that the pantry shelves were a tiny bit deeper. If we end up staying in this house for a long period of time and I decide to make the investment, I would consider redoing the shelves in this pantry and making one shelf or maybe all of them come out a little bit more so I could have more of a countertop and have some of my appliances sit on there. I love that I have outlets in the pantry. You'll see I have my toaster there. I played around a little bit with having my air fryer sit on the countertop top there because I do wish I had a spot that I could put all of the appliances, my blender, I have my little milk frother, all of that stuff and it could just permanently stay on a shelf put away in the pantry. But a girl can dream and it seems like for now a lot of those appliances will have to stay on the floor and I'll need to pull them out as I need them and plug them in on the countertop. There are quite a few things that I don't use on a regular basis that I can put up high. So I got a shoe shelf. I got a little bit creative. I always do that when I'm looking for organizing products. Don't just look in the section of the home that you're trying to organize based on the way that the store you're purchasing from categorizes things. The shoe shelf actually fit quite well at the top of the pantry and I didn't have to do any construction in my home. If you are a renter, that's a great idea as well. If you have some extra space on the floor, for example, if I had a little more space, I would have put that shoe shelf on the bottom, but I love that I can take advantage of the height there. So at this point I've done some rearranging and I'm a little bit stuck with how I want to proceed. So Jim was actually nearby. So he popped over in the pantry and we were talking through what he thought. He usually just kind of trusts me with the organizing, but we share this home together. He's in the pantry a lot as well, though I typically do more of the cooking. I wanted his opinion and he had some really great ideas. Okay, 
so I finally think I have a layout that I like. There's a few more products that I'm gonna go pick up and a few things I'm going to return. But while I wait to do that, I'm going to organize and declutter actually the items and the food that goes in the pantry. But it's easier with you. I'm going through First up, I had a bin for all of Owen's snacks and I'm going to pull all of the stuff out there. It was called snacks, but that didn't really make sense because it was just food for our child. So I'm going to have to rename that when I come up with the new system for the bins that I've added, but I'm going to still keep the old bins that I had and probably put them all up high. So I'm rearranging and moving some of the tags to different bins. So that one I changed to nut milks, all of my milk alternatives. I usually buy them from Costco. So I do have some back stock and I will put those at the top of the shelf. I also have back stock spices. I keep my most regularly used spices easily accessible and then when I buy them in bulk or buy spices that I don't use as regularly I have them for more specific recipes then I will put them in this spice container and that can go up high at the top of the pantry as well so what I'm doing right now is going through all of those spices I want to check expiration dates I want to make sure I don't have duplicates I also want to combine things that I can or refill jars that need a little bit of refills and maybe I can throw away a few of the bottles in the backup spice container. This bottle was ginormous, so I have a smaller bottle of it, which I'm going to refill, and then I was gonna grab a little plastic bag and pour the rest of it in there so I can just get rid of the big plastic bottle because it takes up so much space. The one thing that annoys me is I made a mistake and bought a second ranch seasoning. Those things are huge, so you'll see I have two ranch seasonings there, and should have checked what I had in the pantry before I went out to the grocery store. Another bin that I have said baking on it, and this is backup food baking products. I had another bin that's also baking items that go up high. So I'm going to go through this because I also have separate bins for sprinkles and decorations. I'm pulling those out right now and just trying to figure out the best way to organize all of my baking items here because I have so many because I love to bake. And as the light I decided to have one bin for my cake spinner that I use when I'm making a cake and little cardboard cake circles, as well as a tool that you can use to slice cakes. Cake strips are those purple items there that I'm adding into the bin as well. So I think that's gonna complete one bin. I'm gonna set it aside and then evaluate the rest of it. In these clear and turquoise bins, I have one for frosting. I have one for decorations, I'm calling it one for cookie cutters and one for cupcake liners. The cookie cutters and cupcake liners are already organized the way that I want them to. And I'm going back and forth on how I wanna do the decorations because it's not quite fitting in this clear and turquoise bin. So I went back and forth, but what I ultimately decided was I'm going to put all of the items that are more holiday or special occasion related in one bin and the regular day-to-day -day decorations, if you can say day-to-day. -day. I'm not necessarily baking every day, but the more frequently used decorations are going to stay more accessible in the teal and clear bin. And then when I'm baking for holidays, I can pull out the holiday specific sprinkles or the candles that have a number one or say happy birthday or something very specific on them. You'll see how well this bookshelf worked out. All of the bins that I already owned fit so perfectly on there. And as I'm going through here, I, I'm taking note of the new categories that I'm creating, trying to reuse the labels that I already have, but I will have to make a few labels at the end there and update things a little bit later.
I've gathered all of my blender supplies and putting those to the side. And then I had a miscellaneous category, which is never great. So I'm trying to go through the miscellaneous category. I decided to get rid of part of my mixer. I never use it. I'm trying to do a little bit of decluttering here. And if you see me talking, I'm talking to Jim saying, hey, do you think I should get rid of this if I never use it? And his response is usually yes, especially if I've been here for, like I said, over a year and there are certain items I've never used and don't really foresee any occasion when I would use them. I think those are items that I can declutter. So I'll still have a miscellaneous category because I have little things like that waffle maker or I have my parts to my juicer and I don't need a whole container just for those things. So I will keep that category, but there are numerous items that go with my instant pot and with my mixer that I'm going to create a new category for and separate those out so the bin isn't so stuffed as it was before. I'm also taking this opportunity to wipe things off a bit while I can and restocking my can organizer. This organizer is really simple. It fits cans nicely and I can also fit some miscellaneous items at the bottom there. Right now I don't have that many items so I was able to fill up the middle row with all cans. The next row up has a lot of pasta sauces and then the bottom was actually pretty empty. Time to play around with some of the new organizers. This is going to be the one where I have Owen snacks in there. And I was so excited about having these organizers because I thought I could add multiple levels and really maximize my space with the trays that fit perfectly on top of these open front bins. But you'll see, it didn't really work out for me. But if you are interested in maximizing your vertical space, you could check out these bins and the trays that go along with them. I just found that as I was adding things in there, it was gonna be a lot easier not to have a top on there so I could go in and out and grab things. And I had a lot of items that were really tall and I would have to put them on their side if I put the tray on top and it was just much easier to ditch the tray. Next to the kids snack bin, I have more of an adult snack bin. So I'm stocking that up. You'll see these wire bins. That's where I keep some of our produce that doesn't need to be refrigerated. And like I had before, I had a giant bin on the floor that was for backstock. And a lot of it really wasn't true backstock. It was just things that I didn't know where to put in the pantry. So creating new snack bins is solving for that problem, but I do still have backstock items. And they're things that I buy in bulk, typically decant, and don't use the entire container of something. So I still need to have a backstock or extras bin. I'm just choosing to put it way up high and clear off the floor a little bit more. Days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Let me figure out where the road goes Even if I'm A little bit of reorganizing the appliances on the floor. I have my juicer here that I cut the tag off of, my Instant Pot, my mixer, my brand new air fryer, and I actually decided to move the juicer over. And then I'm gonna pop back on the shelves there and do some reorganizing of my oil and vinegar Lazy Susan. I never filmed this as a part of a YouTube video, but I did upgrade my oil and vinegar bottle, so I will link those in the description box as well. Really like the new containers that I have. I think they are really aesthetically pleasing and also work quite well. Trust in our wings to fly Sometimes we're crashing down But we get up and start from the ground 
I just got back from running some errands. I returned a lot of the organizers that didn't fit or work out for me. And then I wanted to get some new ones to finish up the project here. So I did a Target pickup and placed an order for a few more OXO containers because one of them is cracked and I wanted a few more to finish up kind of this two level thing that I'm working on. And before I did the Target pickup, I ran to Home Goods and found some of the OXO containers at a much cheaper price there. So after I did my Target pickup, I went and returned everything else and also returned a couple of those OXOs that I had just ordered. So great to check a discount store like Home Goods first if you're looking for containers, whether they're the name brand types or I have, let me grab this really quickly, this protein powder that my husband ordered. At, I mean, like it is way larger than my face. It is ginormous. There is no way I'm fitting this in my pantry. So I wanted to find a few round containers because I would like to also have another flavor of protein powder, like a chocolate or a vanilla. This one's unflavored. So I was thinking I would get maybe like one for this unflavored one, one for another protein powder. And then I drink matcha all the time. So I thought I could also put some of my matcha powder in one. So I wanted three round canisters and these ones are so nice. The seal is awesome. And you just flip this little pop up and it opens. So I got these at Home Goods too. So I'm glad I checked there first. Great price. If I can find them online, I will link them as well. But with that, I am going to get the rest of this product in the pantry and finish up the project. Maybe the sun will spread your joy to the one to lost. I honestly couldn't find these types of round containers that I was looking for at Target. I saw some that were in sets of three, but they were all different sizes and I wanted them to be the same size. I wanted them to be round because I was putting them on the Lazy Susan and was just kind of going for that look. And I can't believe that I originally thought that I would try and put this giant protein powder in the pantry. Jim and I were trying to find a spot for it. And then as I was redoing the pantry, I was thinking, why would I ever put this giant thing in my pantry? It takes up so much space. Huge fan of decanting for this reason. And especially as that jug starts emptying out, I can throw it away a little bit sooner. Some of the other bins and categories I'm creating here are one for rice and grains, another one for nuts and seeds, and maybe some other dried fruits like raisins or craisins or something if I have those on hand. I will put all of those in there. And then in the corner, I do wanna have a little bit of a miscellaneous spot. So I got this organizer that is meant for the corner of different shelves and it matches some of the other organizers that I got. And I did try loading it up, I'm not sure sure if it's the solution that I like or if I want to get another Lazy Susan or keep looking. I love everything that I got in the pantry, but I'm still not 100% sold on that one. I got a second shelf riser just like I got for the other side there so I can stack those oxos up a little bit higher and I can see everything that I have and do two rows there. I wish I would have done this sooner, but so glad I found this solution and it happens to fit perfectly with the oxos and on my shelf. Another thing that I found was some small bins that fit inside of these bins so I can do some more decanting, get rid of packaging, be able to see exactly what we have. I will say the only downside of this is I started decanting some of Owen's snacks and now he can see all of his snacks and loves going in the pantry and grabbing snacks and holding them up and showing us that he would like to eat one. The other great thing about these ones is that they are stackable, so I can put them side by side or stack them on top of each other depending on what I have in these bins. I also am not planning on labeling these because what's gonna be in the larger bins will probably rotate pretty often. Hey, I heard you got a new best friend. Yeah, it hurts a bit. I won't pretend that it doesn't matter that you're with someone else. Then I had some other small open spaces that couldn't quite fit those large open front bins that I bought. 
and I found some matching ones that are a little more narrow. So I got those to fill in the extra spaces and they fit just perfectly. My idea for the one up high was to create a bin for the items that I'm going to use for recipes that week of cooking. I've seen bins that are for items that should be eaten first, things that are going to expire first. That's a really great idea. I don't have that issue as much, so if you have that issue, maybe consider that. But the issue I have is I get certain things that I'm going to cook for those recipes that I'm making that week, that night, the next day, whatever it might be, and I don't necessarily have a spot for them. So if I have a bin for items that we're eating that week or I'm using recipes that week, I'm hoping that will solve my problem. Now I'm going to finish up putting some labels on things and get this pantry all together. Here is the final after of everything. I'm so excited with how this turned out. I didn't spend a ton of money. I still reused a lot of the products that I had from before, just did a lot of rearranging and made a bunch of extra space for myself and hopefully made this a lot more functional. Thanks for joining me in my pantry today so that we can talk a little bit more about decanting and specifically pantry decanting. So if you're not familiar with what decanting is, Typically the term is used just to mean pouring the contents of one container into another. Oftentimes we hear about decanting wine, but you can really decant products all throughout your entire house. And if you've followed me here on YouTube or on Instagram, you know that I love an aesthetically pleasing organized space. Oftentimes that involves some decanting of some sort all throughout my house. But one of the main places that I love to implement some decanting is here in the pantry, as I'm sure you can tell. I have all of my uniform containers behind me and I wanted to go over not only what I think the benefits are, maybe some of the downsides to decanting as well as some frequently asked questions and some tips and tricks on what you can do if you are decanting in your pantry. So let's start off right away with some of the benefits of decanting. I already mentioned the first benefit and that is that it's aesthetically pleasing. I feel all sorts of joy when I walk into this pantry and see how nice and organized everything is. And the look of all of those uniform containers really just makes my organizing heart sing. That is obviously one really big benefit is that it has a neat look to it. But there are tons of other ones, including the fact that if you have an airtight container, it's going to prolong the life of your food. So you don't have to necessarily use the exact containers that I have here. I like the OXO pop containers. They just pop right open like this and come open and pop closed and they seal that way. So something like this is really great because it is airtight. You're going to kind of defeat the purpose or not get the full value of the benefit of decanting if you don't have an airtight container. So having airtight containers oftentimes will give you a longer shelf life of your product than just rolling up the plastic inside of a bag and using a little chip clip to seal it or even just rolling it over in general or whatever the product is, these airtight containers are going to help a whole lot. Another great thing is that if you pick out a few sizes here, or if you have containers that are all the same size throughout your pantry, you're gonna find that you can actually fit more in your space. So you'll see I have some that are stacked on top of each other, like the two over here. I have two different layers, but the fact that there are uniform containers makes it a lot easier to stack one thing on top of another and make it so you can fit more items in one space. The boxes that all of these things came in or bags are all different sizes. It's really hard to squish them all in. So having the uniform containers actually allows you to fit more in your pantry than you may have been able to previously. Another one of my favorite things is the fact that I can easily see exactly what I have and that has two benefits in my mind. Number one is that you're going to be able to make healthy choices. You know exactly what's in your pantry, so you're less tempted to maybe go pick out something that's not as healthy because all of your items are here. It's gonna help with meal planning and things like that. But the second thing is that it's also going to save you money. 
So I know buying all of these containers can be expensive, but I do think there is a little bit of it that can save you money in the long run by seeing the food that's right in front of you. When you go to the grocery store, you're going to know what you have on hand already. So you're gonna prevent yourself from going to the grocery store and thinking that you have something and then going home and realizing and opening the box that you only have a tablespoon left of breadcrumbs instead of what you thought was two cups worth of breadcrumbs. It will help you purchase the items you actually need and not purchase things that you already have sitting in your pantry right in front of your very eyes. Now I think we should talk about some of the downsides and drawbacks of decanting because I want to acknowledge that there are some negatives to decanting. One of the main downsides that I hear from a lot of people and I fully agree with is decanting and coming up with a pantry like the one that I have here can be expensive. You can find containers that are on the more affordable side for sure. These OXO pop containers are ones that last forever. I grew up using these. My mom has had hers for I don't even know how many years. So they are very high quality and there are some that are less expensive. Again, you just wanna make sure that if you are using them that are less expensive, they are still airtight. So it doesn't have to be the most expensive, but you still wanna make sure it's high quality, even if it's on the more affordable end. But even with affordable containers, this isn't free. It costs money. So downside is that it's expensive. Another negative is that it can actually be quite messy to decant. So you're pouring all of your containers that you get from the grocery store, your boxes and other things like that into these large bins. Sometimes you'll see below, I have my spices. So you're pouring them into smaller containers that maybe have a very small opening and that sometimes leads to spills. But I will say, I know we're talking about the negatives here. I will say, think about flour specifically. So every time I go to bake and bake something with a bag of flour and scoop my measuring cup in there, I feel like flour is always going everywhere. When I roll the top down, it tends to kind of like have fallout on the sides and I have flour all over my countertop. It's on the side of the bag. Then I put it in my pantry. My pantry gets messy. So I would rather make that mess one time as I pour the whole bag of flour into my large flour bin rather than make a mess every single time I go to bake or use that flour. So kind of a pro, kind of a con. I'll let you guys decide. But beyond the fact that it is messy and expensive, it's also time consuming. So when you come home from the grocery store, if you are somebody who's made the decision to decant, it's gonna take you a moment. You can't just throw all of your groceries in the pantry, in your cabinet or cupboard like you used to. If you're going to replace some items that were completely out, then it might take a moment for you to actually put all of those groceries away because you're gonna have to do a little bit of decanting. Okay, so let's run through some of the most frequently asked questions that I get when it comes to decanting. Number one is what type of containers should I purchase? I don't know where to start. We talked about the importance of having uniform containers. You saw that I have some that are different sizes, but I try and limit the number of sizes so that they do stack on top of each other pretty nicely and make a uniform pattern within my pantries. Also, you're gonna wanna be conscious of the size of the containers that you're getting for each item that you plan to decant. So by that, I mean, I am not going to use something that is this small for my bag of flour. That would make absolutely no sense to me because you would be pouring your five pound bag of flour into a tiny, tiny container and then you have all of this excess left over in the bag of flour. So you want to be able to, in my mind, pour the full container of whatever you're purchasing at the grocery store into your canister. The only exception to that is when you buy in bulk. 
So if you buy a bag of flour at Costco, you don't need to have a giant canister to fit that entire bag. Part of the benefit of decanting is the fact that you can buy in bulk and not have to have those bulky items on your pantry shelves or in your cabinet or anything like that. You can put them in a place that's a little bit more tucked away. But in general, you want to be able to pour your entire regular grocery size container into the size of the container that you've purchased. Next is what do I do with all of the excess that doesn't fit into the containers that I buy? So if you are somebody that's taking advantage of decanting because you do prefer to purchase in bulk or you just sometimes have something that the container doesn't fit the full item and you have a little bit of excess left in the bag or the container, I suggest having one bin or one location where you have all of that back stock or all of that excess. I like to have that on the floor of my pantry and can refill things easily that way. You can have it tucked away elsewhere, but I try and limit it to just that one space and it's all of my back stock and all of those little leftover things. It kind of defeats the purpose if you have much more than that. So try to keep it as limited as possible. What about labeling things? I like to suggest that you make your labels as general and as broad as possible. So an example that I have here is my nuts container. I know what type of nuts these are. I know that I switch out nuts sometimes regularly, sometimes frequently. So for me, it makes more sense to have a general title here rather than one that's super specific. I do the same thing with my pasta containers. I just label them pasta. That way, if I get rigatoni one day and elbow noodles the next day, I don't have to relabel it or suffer through the organizing nightmare of having it say rigatoni and I have elbow noodles inside of there. It can just say pasta. I visually know what type of pasta that is. So that's enough for me, but keeping them as general as possible makes it so you don't have to switch out your labels super often, especially if you're going with a more professional looking label like these ones that you're going to want to make high quality and stick on there and they're going to stay for a while. So these labels I do actually sell on my website if you're ever interested in purchasing custom labels. But another great thing is that you can just use a marker and write on your containers by hand. You can use a Sharpie paint pen. That's a great thing to do. And it comes off perfectly with a magic eraser. You could just use a regular Sharpie and write on them if you want. You can do little sticker labels yourself. Really get creative if you are interested in labeling your containers. What about expiration dates and instructions, nutritional information, all of that stuff. For expiration dates, you can do exactly what I just mentioned about labeling is you can use a Sharpie paint pen and use a little magic eraser to just write on the bottom when the expiration date is every time you pour an item in there and just erase it when you're done. I actually just sometimes use a regular thin Sharpie and it comes off just fine if I kind of scratch at it or use a little bit of acetone on the bottom or something. The bigger question that I get more often is what do I do with instructions and what do I do with nutritional information that I want to save that's important to me. I like to use these little pockets on the side. I don't need them for very many things, but there are a couple of items like this couscous that I constantly forget how to make it. I know it's so basic, but I still forget. So cutting out the instructions there and just slipping them into this little adhesive pocket works great for me. And you can, again, do that with either instructions or with the nutritional information. Another thing I've seen some people do before, and a few of you have actually shared that you do this as well, is to take the top off and put those instructions right in the top there with a little piece of tape. So that is another easy way to do it and a lot less expensive too. What types of things should and can I decant? I decant both dried goods 
and some liquids like my oils and my vinegars. So it doesn't just have to be for your dried pantry goods. That's usually what people think about, but you can easily do both. I definitely don't recommend decanting absolutely everything that you purchase from the grocery store. Like I mentioned, it doesn't have to be an all or nothing thing. I would recommend decanting a few things. As you can tell, I'm a proponent of it. I think if there's one item from the grocery store that I would recommend that you decant, it's probably the flour. And that's for the exact reason that I mentioned earlier. Flour is so messy and just decanting the flour makes such a difference when I'm baking and making things a little bit cleaner for me because I am already a messy cook as it is and I don't need even more of a mess. So what types of things should you decant beyond liquid versus dried goods? They should be the items that you're using on a regular and frequent basis. If it's an item that you're buying just kind of as a one-off, you don't need to purchase a whole separate container to pour that item in just for that one random recipe that you're making. That makes absolutely no sense. They should be your most used products, the things that you like to have in stock in your pantry, and other items like that. So there is a very fine balance here to somewhere in the middle ground of decanting absolutely everything and decanting nothing. And I have full faith in you that you will find that happy medium. Doesn't the food at the bottom get really old and then you always have fresh food at the top? So people will ask, what you do about refilling the containers if you are running low on your oats. And oats are something that you decide to decant. And you go to the grocery store, you go get some more oats because you know you're running low because it's a clear container. You can easily see that you're running low and you get home and you have that little bit left. What do you do? So there's two strategies to this. Number one, I try and work through my products regularly so I know they're not expiring. I can always check the bottom or check where I've written the expiration date. But beyond taking the full time to work through the entire item, sometimes I will take the easy route and pour the oats into like a small bowl or something, take my new container of oats that I just bought from the grocery store, dump that in, and then dump the old ones on top of it. That does make it a little bit trickier in terms of expiration dates and in terms of the fact that your oats might kind of blend together and it all becomes one really and you can't really tell the difference between the old oats and the new oats. That's more the strategy I use for something that I'm using pretty frequently and I'm just going to use it up pretty quickly anyway. I'm probably not going to hit either of the expiration dates or get anywhere close to it. If it's something I'm using less often, then I do try and work all the way through it before pouring in the next batch of whatever I've purchased. And I will say if something is an item that I use extremely frequently and really, really won't get anywhere near that expiration date, maybe it's something that doesn't expire very quickly, I will just throw it on top of the food that's already in there and it really doesn't matter to me. So you can pick how important that is to you and which of the three strategies you want to use. The super, super lazy one, just throw things on top. That's best if you're going to work through it quickly. Or again, you can wait till it's all the way gone or dump everything out, pour the new item in and dump the old stuff on top. Don't you tell me that you're in town I already know a couple days ago Hey, now that our names are written in stone Let's be honest, sounds like home. I am going to tackle this pantry from top to bottom today, pull almost everything out and wipe off the surfaces. In a pantry, things tend to get dirty. There's crumbs that spill places. So even though we moved in September, not that long ago, I want to go through, clean this space in addition to refreshing and refilling and making sure the organizational systems are working for me. Now at the top of the pantry, some of these bins that I took down, are baking items. This first one is a back stock of baking food items. I have a second baking one that is everything related to cake decorating. There's an apron in there, other items like that. But this 
food baking backstock bin, I have a bunch of containers for vanilla extract and I typically make my own vanilla extract with vanilla beans and vodka. I've shared that before as a fun DIY gift that you can do for friends or family. I have some bottles that are empty right now and my mom bought me this giant vanilla extract from Costco Business Center. If you've never been to a Costco Business Center, it is a crazy, crazy place. Costco times 10 basically. So everything that a business owner, think a restaurant owner might need. They also have some things that are normal consumer size, but they really have a lot of bulk, bulk items. So she got me this vanilla extract because of how often I bake. And I love my own bottles a little bit more. So I'm just gonna pour this vanilla extract into my own bottles. And I don't mind that some of these bottles are half of my homemade vanilla extract. And then I'm just gonna top it off with the other vanilla extract. It's all the same, adding a little bit more flavor. And I was almost able to get rid of that bottle, but there is just a tiny bit left. Honestly, with how often I bake in the next like week or so, I will probably go through that. These other four bins I use to decorate cakes and cupcakes, sometimes cookies. I have cookie cutters, cupcake liners, food coloring, decorations, candles, all of that stuff. And then the other baking bin was what I mentioned. It has a turntable to make cakes. It has that apron and other items like that. The last two bins that I put on top of my pantry are my nut milk bin. Yes, I have a whole bin for different nut milks. I love almond milk, coconut milk, oat milk, especially oat milk is my favorite. I used to drink soy milk a lot. Now I really don't, but I just kind of mix it up depending on what flavors I want. I put them into my smoothies, in my overnight oats, when I'm baking, really everything. And then the last bin is my backup spices. So some of these are spices that I use to refill my spice jar containers that I have lower down in my pantry and others are spices I just don't use very often. I always think a really good fun project to start to organize your kitchen or your pantry wherever you put your spices is to create uniform containers for your spices and have uniform jars. It makes such a difference in the look of your space, but one of the big downsides and drawbacks is the fact that it does get sticky sometimes and messy and that's true of any decanting typically when you run out of a jar or container of whatever food item you purchase you throw it away and you move on to a new fresh bottle or a new fresh container but when you reuse bottles and containers they never get thrown away. So you need to take the time to actually clean them. And it seems tedious and silly to have to clean off all of your spice jars and all of your containers, but I am planning on doing that today because you need to do it every now and then. Work. As I'm refilling things, you might have questions about how decanting works and if I choose to pour out the contents of something first, then pour in the newest thing followed by the old spice maybe on top of it. So the oldest stuff is at the top of the spice jar and I can use that up first or what I do with expiration dates. Do I write them on the bottom? Do I care about that stuff? Any of those questions, I just posted a video all about pantry decanting, hopefully answering all of your frequently asked questions, some of the pros and cons to decanting, questions that you might have about what types of items you should decant and what types of containers you should purchase. So I will make sure to link that in the cards above if you're interested, as well as in the description box. And then you can check that video out if you wanna know all about decanting.
All of those containers are nice, neat, and tidy now, so I am going to wipe off the top shelf and start unloading the next shelf. The next shelf down on the right side, I have bigger baking items, meaning flours, whole wheat flour, regular flour, sugar. I have bread flour, coconut flour, almond flour, lots of different flours, as you can tell. That's all on the right hand side. So I'm going to get those down and wipe them off like I was talking about. Baking containers, I feel like get the messiest because I am just all in it and getting everything all messy and sticky and there's batter going everywhere so those really do need a good wipe down I do occasionally when I work fully through an item in a container, I will stick my OXO pop containers, these are the containers that I'm using, right in the dishwasher and they hold up really well. My labels even stay on there. I try and put them on the top rack of the dishwasher if possible. I don't dishwash the tops of them, those I hand wash, but the actual containers themselves do hold up well in the dishwasher for me. I'm going section by section a little bit here because I don't want to overwhelm my kitchen countertops with all of the different items by pulling everything down all at once. So with all of the flowers and sugars back, I am going to also put back some of the things on the top shelf there using my collapsible step stool. Very handy for somebody who's a little bit shorter like I am. And then I will continue moving on to the rest of the second shelf down. I use a giant Lazy Susan in the corner there for some of my larger items. So I'm going to pull that down, wipe it off. I have things on there like this pretty large size of coconut oil. I have a couple different protein powders and a large honey. I have ghee and brewer's yeast. That is a supplement that I had to make some lactation cookies for breastfeeding, but really those big bulky items fit great on this giant Lazy Susan and works perfectly in a corner where you sometimes struggle to access things. On the left side of this shelf, again, more baking items, but it's the smaller baking items. I have walnuts up there. I put them separate from my other nuts because walnuts I pretty much only use for baking. So I have those up there and then I have cocoa powder, baking soda, powdered sugar, brown sugar, chocolate chips, and cornstarch. The next shelf down is OXO pop container land, all of my dried pantry goods, as well as in the corner Lazy Susan, I have my oils and vinegars and extracts and everything there. So I'm starting with the pantry dried goods. There are two levels of containers here. So I have some in the way back and then I have a layer in front of it of shorter containers. I'm going to refill some of these. I got more almonds and more cashews to refill those containers. So I am doing the method here where I pour out the stuff that's on the bottom into a bowl, pour the new stuff in the bottom of the container, and then pour the older item on top. So I use the old cashews, for example, up first. 
I also had to snack on a couple cashews because I love cashews. They're probably one of my favorite nuts, maybe pistachios too, but I do really like cashews. And then I'm filling up my popcorn. Popcorn is a fun snack that I like to have. I just make it on the stove top with a little bit of oil and pop it for as long as it takes until about 30 seconds after the last pop. And it's that simple. Some of these containers, like the hemp parts that I just wiped off, you'll notice that there's a scoop in there. It's really handy for me to have certain containers to have scoops in them. Mostly just the things that I use for smoothies. So I have one in my hemp parts, I have one in chia seeds and flax seeds. While I did have some items on the bottom of my pantry to restock these things, it was helpful to go through and pull everything out to also know what other items that I might need to restock and repurchase and add to my next grocery list. When I bought this huge bag of chia seeds from Costco, I thought it was gonna kind of take me a while to go through it. It didn't. I've been making so many different types of overnight oats that I blew through it faster than I could have imagined. <laughs> Onto that Lazy Susan, I'm unloading it a little bit. It's hard to carry it all over at once because there are so many heavy bottles on there. So I just kind of took a few items over to the countertop and then was able to wipe it off, put that back. And I will say this Lazy Susan is still a little bit of a mess for one main reason, and that is I broke a few of the tops to some of these containers or lost them in the move. I honestly can't remember. So I have some containers that are labeled and therefore items that I actually want to use and want to fill them up and want to have them decanted, but I don't have a top for them. And I've tried to buy replacement tops on Amazon and for some reason I can't find a replacement that fits these bottles. So I had to return them a couple of times. I've tried maybe two or three times and cannot find a top to fit them. So I either just need to buy a new set or I don't know, I just gotta figure it out, but it's been sitting like this for far too long. One thing you should keep in mind as you're decanting oils, especially something like olive oil, you'll notice if you purchase olive oil, it's in a darker bottle or container. And that is because it helps preserve the life of the olive oil and helps eliminate the amount of light that actually hits that oil. So if you do plan to store your olive oil, for example, out on the countertop where it's exposed to a lot of light, I would suggest finding an amber or a dark green bottle to decant into if you do want to decant. If you're going to put it in your dark pantry like I am, it probably doesn't matter as much, especially if you're somebody like me who plows through olive oil and there is no way it's gonna go bad by the time I use it up. Over here, I keep all of my cookbooks. I had a loose sheet for my smoothie recipes that I just pulled out and I'm just kind of tidying it all up. I did a declutter of this before I moved and I do like and use all of those cookbooks. So I'm leaving all of them and then wiping off my toaster oven and my milk frother that I have there plugged in. And then it's time to move on to all of the spices. Just like I did with the OXO pop containers for my dried goods, I am going to clean off each and every spice jar. It's the 
Estoy cansada la vida Porque sin ti no va nada Bien, echando sal a la herida El limón a la aguardiente Yeah, despechada mejor Ya que si da me arrotan en todo lo que toco El problema es peor Mucho siento por vos Pero se me ve poco Yeah, dime que vamos a hacer I'm not going to make you sit through this entire process of me wiping off each and every spice jar because I'm telling you it took a long time and you don't need to watch me do that. But I did set up my iPad and watched a TV show while I did it. So I was multitasking in that sense and made it a little bit more fun for myself. Finally, it was time to put all of these spices back, and I've mentioned this before, and I know it's strange, but I like to see my spices in rainbow order, kind of. That's just what I like the look of, and it kind of works for me. I'm used to finding things that way. My husband doesn't really cook like I do, so I'm pretty much the one who's finding the spices, and as long as I know where everything is, that's all that matters. And within the rainbow order, I put the most used spices up front. Whereas if you were to do it by alphabetical order or something, your most used spices might not necessarily be in front because that's maybe not where they fall in the alphabet. So I like that with this method of organizing them, I can put what I use most up front. This area is where I put all of my canned goods and other products that are kind of weird round shapes. I also have chicken stock there, so some boxes. But in my first pantry organization video, I had people ask me where were all of my canned goods and stuff, and I had just moved into the house, so I didn't have a ton. This is where I store them. And then in the back corner, I have all of the different rices that we have, and sometimes I'll have miscellaneous items like raisins or sunflower seeds. And then I have a couple of bins for my Vitamix blender, miscellaneous things, snacks, and then two containers for fresh produce, which usually ends up being potatoes, onions, Onions, bananas, tomatoes, anything like that that doesn't need to be stored in the refrigerator. I'm cleaning the bottom of the pantry floor with my wood cleaner and pulling out all of the appliances and putting those back on the bottom there. Last but not least, it's time to go through the backstock bin. I needed to dump it out because there were some crumbs at the bottom and just quickly reorganize it. First, putting in the largest items so I make sure they fit and sit nicely on the bottom of the container. And then I'm going to put all of the smaller items around them. I love having an extra bin or backstock bin for miscellaneous items, but also for all of the extras that don't fit into containers that I decant. So this is a must have in a pantry for me to keep everything nice and neat looking. And speaking of nice and neat looking, here is the final after of my refreshed and fully cleaned pantry. Keep on telling lies that 
The first thing that I'm doing here is pulling everything out of the pantry, at least as much as possible. And I'm starting with all of my OXO pantry containers. That's what I use to decant all of my dried goods. So I'm gonna get those out first and focus on refilling those because I think it's gonna be a lot easier for me to do one category of things at a time. So with these OXO containers, I know I'm gonna do something similar to what I did in my last pantry, keep them all together in one area. So by refilling them, then I can focus on where those go and fill in the other gaps around them. In my last pantry organization video, I was in my previous apartment and shared putting that whole thing together getting all of these OXO containers labeled. So I'll link that in the cards above if you are interested in that pantry organization video as well. That was a just straight across pantry. It still was a pantry that had a door to it, but very different layout from this one. So if your pantry doesn't look like this one and have a little angle and you wanna see just a straight shelf, that's another great example of how you can organize your pantry as well. But what I did here was ordered a bunch of groceries and just picked them up for some of my main staples. I tried to use up all of my food or as much of it as I could before we moved so I didn't have to move with a bunch of food and worry about things spilling and stuff. So a lot of these actually are empty containers. So it was a big grocery bill trying to get our pantry stock and our refrigerator stock and freezer back up and I'm still honestly working on it, but this was definitely a good start. The only downside I really found to trying to use up all my food and washing these containers really well before I moved was the fact that I just threw in our moving boxes, the tops and bottoms kind of separately and put them in one box saying pantry or whatever it was. But I didn't think about the fact of how I had both the new version and the old version of the OXO containers, but the new tops don't fit on the old bottoms and the old tops don't fit on the new bottoms. So it was a little bit tricky. I'm also gonna fill up my brown sugar container here and make sure to soak my favorite brown sugar bear. This thing, if you soak it in some water, keeps your brown sugar super fresh. And even if your brown sugar has gone rock solid, if you soak one of these bears in some water, then pop it in your container with your brown sugar, it'll bring it back to life and it's almost like it's brand new. It's pretty crazy. So if you're not using one of these, you definitely should give it a try. Your eyes, not even sky's the limit. So while I was working on getting the pantry all cleaned up and put together, Jim and I have kind of been dividing and conquering how we're getting our house set up. So he was heading out to go run some errands. I think he was going to Home Depot. So we gave each other a quick kiss goodbye. He knows that I'm in my happy place decanting things and organizing and filming and all the things that make me really happy. So he left me to do my thing and was gonna go run errands and help us get the rest of our house in order. And you can tell I'm definitely still struggling to figure out which lids go on which tops, but I'm making a list of the rest of the items that I still need to get from the grocery store. So looking at each of these pantry containers as I try and match the lids and figuring out what I still need to purchase so I can add that to my grocery list and continue to 
refill all of the pantry containers that I have. Now that all of those are pretty much in order, I'm gonna continue to pull things out of my pantry to make space to figure out where I want those containers to go. And just kind of starting to lay things out in a general direction. I have a sense for where I want things. I'm thinking I wanna do some Lazy Susans in the corners of each shelf, or at least pretty much each shelf, because that is a great way to take advantage of a deep corner. The Lazy Susan obviously turns around and rotates so you can access things that might otherwise be lost in a corner. I'm hoping I can get these containers on two or maybe three shelves. So the higher up one I wanna use for baking. So I'm starting to put the things that I consider more so baking items on the higher shelf because I don't use them quite as often. And then the next shelf down, I'll try and use for more daily items. And I am planning on doing a two tiered system. First of all, the shelves are deep enough that I can do that. But second of all, it does take up a ton of space if you just do one layer. If you have a huge pantry and you don't cook a lot or you don't have a lot of food, go for it. But for me, I have a ton of food. This is still a pretty big pantry, but I really don't mind having the two layers and I used it in my last pantry. Worked out great for me, so I am gonna do two layers on that second shelf with everyday items. But you will see, even though I'm doing two layers, they vary in height, so I can still easily see what's behind the first layer and just simply slide something out of the way and get to what's in the back. And again, you'll see how I first lay out the organizing product or get a sense for the general layout that I want and then start to load the items into or onto the organizing products and items. So these plastic containers are drawers that I did use in my last pantry on the floor for backstock items and I packed into them when we moved all of my spices and a couple other items and food related things that I didn't want to spill but I'm hoping to get them out of my pantry. I have had them since my freshman year of college and I'm hoping to just kind of elevate the look of my pantry a little bit. Again, I'm just starting with products that I own, so I'm not gonna go out and purchase anything new, but hoping with a larger pantry, I can get rid of these and put them in the basement and use them in our storage room for another purpose. So I'm just gonna unload all of those spices, try and put the spices in an order that makes sense to me or an order that looks good back onto that spice rack. Now, last time I did it in kind of rainbow order and I liked the look of it. It worked for me. I'm the one who cooks. I know where everything is, but I know a lot of people do alphabetical order. So let me know what you would do. I'm at least for now trying to do rainbow order again. And I think that works really well for me. But are you more of a color and visual person or somebody who would prefer alphabetical? from my window sounds coming up like the day before and if you are looking at my pantry and looking at the labels on my oxo containers my spice jars or my 
oil and vinegar bottles. I actually sell those labels on my website, which I will make sure to link in the description box if you are ever interested. I'm more than happy to make you a custom set of labels for your pantry. If you don't see what you want, feel free to send me a message either through my website or on my email address, which is also linked in the description box below. If you have specific size requirements for the size of spice jars or pantry containers or oil and vinegar bottles that you have, I always want to make sure it's going to be something that works out for you. So just send me a message and I'm happy to help you out. I'm creating a little bit of a backstock bin here. I think I'm gonna do those up high and just keep a small little step ladder in the corner of the pantry. I don't love the look of having open baskets on the bottom floor, at least these low profile open baskets. So I'm gonna try and put them up and kind of hide the mess and keep more of my appliances and things like that towards the bottom. So it's a little more visually appealing. We'll see how that works out if I'm able to get things up and down pretty easily or if that ends up being a pain. And that's kind of the mentality that I'm going into this organization, first of all in my pantry, but throughout the rest of the new house. You can't expect things to be perfect the first time you organize it. You'll see even as I'm going through and organizing the pantry here, I think I put something in a spot that I want it and then I end up rearranging it but you have to be realistic that sometimes things look good as you're organizing it or you think it's gonna be really functional, but then in practice, when you actually go live your life with the way you've set things up, it doesn't quite work exactly the way you thought it was going to. So I'm completely open to the possibility of this not being 100% the way that it's gonna stay, but it's going to be my best effort for now. And then I can always redo it or change things around in the future. So that's part of the reason I didn't wanna buy a whole bunch of organizing products right off the bat in a new space because I wanna figure out what works and then I can go and spend money if I so choose. So down on the floor here, I'm using my old bathroom containers actually that I had backstock products in for some of my baking items. Now I love being able to reuse different organizing tools throughout the house. I don't think you should be limited to just having one item in one room and then if it stops working in that room, it means you can't use the product anymore. I like trying to switch things around, use them in different areas. So it was perfect that I did some decluttering in my bathroom and had more of these little plastic bins and had a ton of baking items so I could use them for my baking items instead. In my last kitchen, I had more space for large bulky appliances in the cabinets in the main kitchen area. I actually don't have that much room in this kitchen for that, but because this pantry is so big, it works out great that I can put my large appliances on the floor of the pantry and I can even store some of the accessories that go with them. So things like the Vitamix parts for my blender and my Instant Pot parts and accessories that come with it, I can put those in a little bin. Even my toaster, I think I'm gonna try and keep it in here. It's a little bit big for the shelf. It sticks off just a tiny bit, but there's an outlet in here so I can leave the toaster in the pantry and actually not worry about leaving it on the counter and taking up the countertop space. Now 
now that I have a general sense of what's gonna go into these baskets and bins, I quickly printed off a few labels that I'm gonna put on bin clips to go on the bins and make sure I know what goes in there, especially super high up. I found that even though I printed these labels and put them onto the bin clips when I went to go put the bin clips on the bins in the pantry, I already forgot what I had put way up high. It had been, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes, but completely already forgot. So some people might think that it's a little bit unnecessary to label everything or not aesthetically pleasing to them. I like the look of labels, but also I think it's really functional, not only because I forget what goes where, but also because it's much easier if you have friends that come over and might be helping you cook or other family members that can be helpful in the kitchen if they want to know where something goes and they want to help you out or if they say they don't know where to put something away you can say yes you do it is labeled so there's a lot of benefits to labeling but I just thought it was funny that I even forgot what I had just done only moments ago so slow you in my arms won't let go the world around can pass us by a thunderstorm a lightning strike as we hold each other tight you're the rose in a garden and it shows if i'm This is a little behind the scenes process of me making the labels, but if you do choose to ever order from my website, you can see how easy it really is. You just need like a credit card or something else that you can push the label onto your flat surface and make sure it adheres. And then you peel off that clear plastic part called the transfer tape. And then all you're left with is the lettering. There's no clear tape left on there. It's just the letters, which I think leaves a really sleek, pretty look. So even as I was putting on the bin clips, I realized it was weird that I was gonna put one bin on the floor and then one bin a level up. So I moved the Instant Pot up and then decided to put both of the bins next to each other on the floor. That's a really great tip when you're trying to look for a way to make any organized space look more cohesive putting like items together. You saw I put all of my pantry containers in one spot together. I put all of my spices in one spot together. On the top, I had all of those uniform bins all looking nice and neat together. So try and keep like things together and that in itself will make a huge difference even if you don't have all of the fancy organizing products. I also made a couple of labels that I just put directly onto the little clear containers for my baking accessories and used a shelf riser to help organize those better. So I created one category for cupcake liners, another category for decorations, one for frosting, which are all the tools I use for my frosting of cakes and cupcakes. And then the last one is for cookie cutters. So with that, I will show you the final after of my pantry, how it looks so far. Again, things may change in the future, but pretty proud of what it looks like with just the products I already owned. Happy days be our guest. 
I think we're at a good stopping point. I love the way that it looks, especially the fact that I was able to use the products that I already own, and it just makes more sense to use those products, see how things work for me, and then if I wanna go out and buy new things or upgrade anything, I can always do that in the future. So in today's video, I'm going to give you a tour of my organized pantry. I have given tours of other spaces in my apartment, like my bathroom and my closet. I already did my kitchen, but I left out my pantry because that's exactly what we're gonna do today. First things first, I feel really lucky to have a pantry like this in an apartment. My previous apartment also had a pantry. It was about half the size. So having one this size, especially in an apartment, is pretty lucky, I think. It is more common, especially in the U.S., to have pantries these days in newer built homes or newer apartments. I know outside of the U.S., it's not necessarily as common to have a full dedicated pantry space to food storage. But even if you're in a location that doesn't necessarily have a pantry, Hopefully you get a little bit of inspiration and enjoy seeing what my organized pantry looks like. With this first look of my pantry, you're probably noticing that I am a big fan of decanting products. If you aren't familiar with the word decanting used in this sense, you're probably familiar with it when we're talking about decanting wine, but it's also very popular in the organizing world, talking about pouring the contents of one item from its original packaging into another container. So I like to decant my dried goods as well as some of my oils, which we'll touch on in a minute. But my favorite container for dried goods is the OXO pop containers. I've used these forever. My mom actually used them so I grew up using them and they are my favorite to keep food items sealed and keep them lasting longer as well as making your pantry look super high end and beautiful. But I think before we dive into anything else, let's just kind of work top to bottom. That makes the most sense to me. On the top shelf is where I decided to put all of my baking items. If you have followed me for a while, you know that I am a baking lover. It's one of my passions beyond organizing. But even though I love baking, I don't access all of my baking items on a daily basis so it makes the most sense for me to put things that I don't use every single day way up top and even though I'm 5'4 I can easily grab these items and pull them down whenever I need them but it's just not as easy to grab as maybe this next shelf down so Baking goes up high. Starting from the left, I have my flour and my sugar in the largest containers that they make with the OXO pop containers. That is because, first of all, I go through those faster, but also because when you buy, let's say a five pound bag of flour, I don't wanna have a little tiny container and slowly pour in that flour because then I'm just gonna have a giant backup stash of items and it kind of defeats that purpose of decanting. When I get a new bag of flour, I wanna be able to tip it all the way upside down, pour it in my container and throw away that packaging. So think about how often you use products and how quickly you're moving through it, as well as the sized packages you buy when you're figuring out what products you want to buy for decanting your food into. After the sugar and flour, the next most commonly used, I have my almond flour, my chocolate chips. I have whole wheat flour back there as well, bread flour and almond flour. After that, I have the smaller sizes of containers for the more miscellaneous baking products. I have walnuts back there, baking powder, powdered sugar, some collagen powder that I use in my coffee and different teas. I have cocoa powder back there and all of those weird things that I don't need giant containers for. The other thing that I should mention with this pantry is it does kind of go deep back on either end. And on this side here, 
I have all of my vases kind of tucked back there because I don't need them very often. And then on the other side, I have all of my almond milk and coconut milk that I buy in bulk from Costco. It's shelf stable, so tucking it back there is a great use of space for me. I don't need to go there very often. I just pop open my little expandable step stool, grab exactly what I need and pop it in the fridge. So that's a perfect use of space for me. Moving down to the next shelf, you'll see I have lots more OXO containers with more dried goods in my pantry. And a quick note here, if you're thinking about labeling your pantry items, I would try and keep those labels as broad as possible unless you know that it's a true staple of yours that you are constantly buying and always using, or else you're just gonna find that you have to replace that label or you're pouring food items in there that don't actually match that label. So a great example is you'll see my pasta containers. I label them pasta as opposed to spaghetti or rotini or any other type of pasta that you can think of because I buy different types of pasta and I don't want to lock myself into exactly what it is. Another thing where I have a broad category, you'll see I have two small containers that say nuts. Sometimes I have little pine nuts in there. Sometimes I have like candied walnuts that I buy for salads in there and it switches out as opposed to my almonds and cashews that I have labeled almonds and cashews because I always have them on the hand. So hopefully that helps you a little bit thinking through what you wanna put on your labels if you're going to label your pantry items. Another question I get a lot of times talking about decanting pantry items is how do I keep track of the recipes or instructions and how do I keep track of expiration dates? Those are both very simple fixes for expiration dates. You can use a marker and actually write on the bottom of it the exact date that was on the container that you decanted it from. For instructions and recipes, I have a great solve for this. I buy these little adhesive pockets and add them to the outside of my containers. You can slip in nutrition facts or again any sort of recipe or instructions that you might need to cook the item or whatever it might be. It's super simple and a great solve. On this shelf, you'll see that I try to do two layers of products. So I have a taller layer of products as well as a little shorter one in the front. So whenever I need something in the back, it's pretty easy for me to just grab something out of the way, reach for the larger item in the back, and then put the smaller one back. So not a big deal at all. And I really wanted to take advantage of all of that space as much as I could. The other thing I have on this shelf is a very large Lazy Susan, which I'll link in the description box below because it's great to find a Lazy Susan that's this large. And because my pantry goes back here, as I told you, I think using this Lazy Susan really takes advantage of that space. So you'll see I have other random items on here like honey, my salt, baking powder, I have coconut oil, some flaky sea salt I use when I bake, I have a couple of protein powders, toothpicks, all of that stuff, but it's perfectly accessible with this Lazy Susan and it takes advantage of that space. Another thing I have hidden behind here is my homemade vanilla extract. So I actually make my own vanilla extract and it takes a while for the beans to soak in that alcohol for it to be completely ready to use in your recipes. So I store it back there in the way back of my pantry. It's nice to have it in a cool dark place until it's ready for me to use. Moving down to the next shelf, I think this one's actually my favorite, probably because of this spice shelf. And you may think this is an excessive amount of spices. You're entitled to your own opinion. I love it. I think it's beautiful. I have the space to have it displayed this way. I cook extremely often. I feel like I use all of these spices, so I personally enjoy it. So this is how I chose to display all of my spices. And I have them in rainbow order right now. I've played around with doing them in alphabetical order, but I like the look of it in the rainbow order. So that's the way I do it. I'm the one who cooks in the house, so I know exactly where to find things so it works for me. Again, taking advantage of the sides of the pantry in that dead space. I have all of my extra spices here, so that's some backups that might fill into these, some that I don't actually have containers for because they are used less often or they're newer maybe, as well as some seasoning packets and other things like this. So great use of that dead space again. On the other side of this shelf, another reason this shelf is my favorite is because of this rotating Lazy Susan with all of my oils and vinegars. So I have my olive oil front and center because 
that's what I use the most often. And then I split it either direction going oils and vinegars, if that makes sense. So going to the left here, I have balsamic vinegar, sherry vinegar, red wine vinegar, apple cider vinegar. I have my balsamic reduction. And then on the other side of the olive oil, I have more oils again, grapeseed oil, sesame oil, and then you'll see I have my extracts, that homemade vanilla extract that I'm moving through, a few other extracts, and then my cooking sprays. After this Lazy Susan, I have a little can organizer that's a two-tiered shelf riser. I put random things on there. I don't have a ton of canned goods that often, but I keep some for sure on hand, as well as chicken stock and chicken broth. And I have some rice at the bottom there some leftover drink mixes that I made from another video that I shared with you guys, which I can link in the cards above for Valentine's Day. So I'm almost through that, but I just use whatever is kind of miscellaneous in that area as well as canned items. The next shelf down, I keep pretty simple. The two containers that I have over here, I store any fruits or veggies that are meant to store in the pantry and not in the refrigerator. Things like onions or potatoes, I will put bananas in there, things like that. But I really like the containers because you can store them side by side like I have here. Or if we move and I have a different space and I want to stack them on top of each other, you can easily stack them on top of each other as well, which I think is really great. I liked that they were white and they matched the rest of the look of the pantry. So super easy for me to throw things in there and it's pretty low maintenance. The next container that I have, I have no idea where I got it from. I will try and find a link to it if I can. It is something that I've had probably since I was in college and I try and repurpose any organizing supplies that I have so I don't have to go out and buy new things. Organizing products can be expensive. So this works great in my pantry. It has my garlic keeper. Right now it has peanut butter in it, some lentils in the back. And then we just have a few drink mixes back there. We were obsessed with Mio for a while and I still actually really like it and at, like adding it to my water because I'm terrible about drinking water, but we definitely have too many. We probably only need one or two, not however many we have back there. So I need to keep working through them. On the rest of the shelf, we have our water bottles and our travel mugs. I do have some disposable travel mugs in there. I mostly use them when I would go hiking or skiing and bring coffee with me or even like a smoothie I would drink on the way up to go hike or ski and didn't want to leave that in the car all day long sitting and getting super gross and I wanted to be able to throw it away. So it's not something I use on a daily basis. If I'm bringing coffee to work or anything like that, I use our reusable travel mugs. So trying to go through those disposable ones and hopefully we don't need them again. But I'm also taking advantage of that side space. I have rice packs that you heat in the microwave. They're like 90 second rice packs from Target. I love to cook. I cook so many things from scratch. I make pizza and I make the dough from scratch. I love baking. I love making everything by hand. But for some reason with rice, I cut corners and I still use microwavable rice. My husband really likes the Target rice containers and they have a few different varieties we really like. We like their Spanish rice. We have it when we have taco night. Their basmati rice is really good. So you know what? Sometimes you just need to cut corners and rice is where I cut corners. We're moving down. So I took a seat so you can see exactly what's on the floor of the pantry. I have this container back here with all of our backstock paper towels. Great spot to store it in the kitchen for us so we can easily refill paper towels when they run out. I can see exactly how much I have left. Then I have our KitchenAid mixer. We're in an apartment. I have a very large kitchen for an apartment kitchen, but this feels like the best spot to store it so I'm not taking up other space in the kitchen or other kitchen cabinets. And it's easy for me to pull out the countertop and the island where I bake is right in front of me so I can just pull it right out and pop it on the countertop. And then we have these containers here. I definitely had these when I was in college, probably under my bed storing things like socks and other clothing items and I've just repurposed them in this pantry. And like I said, I wanted to save money, reuse products when we moved into this apartment and not have to buy all new organizing systems. So using things that can switch from room to room or space to space really helps save money. So we repurposed them. I put some fun labels on here. 
We have snacks. I don't have a ton of snacks usually in our pantry. I'm sure you saw above. I've had that question before. Where do you keep your snacks? We don't really buy snacks. So I have this labeled as snacks. Sometimes it turns into extra backstock. I have extras that is extra backstock. And then at the way bottom, I have baking. It can be backstock baking items as well as other baking items that I don't necessarily decant into those OXO containers that are at the top of my pantry. In the other two plastic bins, we have our trash bags. That's my husband's chore in the apartment. He takes care of the trash, so I love that because I hate taking out the trash. He deals with refilling the trash bags and all of that stuff. Then I have backup cleaning products, so sponges and other items. And this, I've actually gone through a lot of it since we've moved in, so this is getting smaller. Then I have my giant baking bin. So many fun things in there. I have my rolling pin, my turntable for when I make cakes, all of my cupcake and cake decorating items. And then way back here, I'm gonna show you exactly what I store in that little tiny extra space and take advantage of that last few inches of my pantry. I know you can't totally see behind there, but I pulled out my little cupcake carrier that I have. I don't know if I would say it's like my love language or my way of showing that I care about my friends and family, but I love to bring baked goods whenever I do some sort of gathering with friends or family. I always want to volunteer to bring something and really like to bring dessert. So this thing comes in handy for sure. You can actually pop out the cupcakes through here, which is really fun. And then I have backup oils and things that I put into my oil and vinegar containers over here as well. And then a small container with all of my cookie cutters. Yes, I have more baking supplies separate from here. I couldn't even fit my cookie cutters in this giant baking bin. So I had to store them separately. In today's video, I'm really excited because I moved into this apartment a couple of weeks ago and I have this new giant pantry that we just kind of threw things into. And today I'm gonna take the time to finally organize things. So if you guys are excited to organize along with me, then let's jump right into the video. I started off by pulling everything out of the pantry, so this is kind of what I'm left with. And I did leave a couple of things in there because I liked the general setup of what I had, like that middle row, and then the bottom row was honestly just too much work, so I left it there for now. Before I started doing any of this, over the past few weeks, I've been making a pantry plan. So I've thought about all of the different dried goods and things that I keep in my pantry and really made a plan not only for the areas within my pantry where I want to create different zones, but also for the labels for all of the products that I decant. And if you're unfamiliar with that, decanting basically just means pulling everything out of its original packaging and putting it into different containers. So I like to buy in bulk and that way I can decant the products into a size that's a little bit more reasonable to keep in my pantry. And with my OXO containers, I created a list of all of the dried goods that I use and exactly which size container I want to keep them in. And I'm right now making new labels for all of those containers. So I use a Cricut to make all of my labels and you can see I just got up to check really quickly the dimensions of some of the labels to make sure that I'm going to print them the correct size. And I will always link in my description box below the Cricut machine if you're interested in purchasing your own. You'll see that they make beautiful labels. It's a little bit tedious, but the labels turn out wonderful. If you're ever interested in a custom label set, you can always email me at sophisticatedorganization at gmail.com and I am more than happy to make a set of custom labels for you for your pantry or your bathroom or anywhere in your home. Now that it's all done printing, the next step is called weeding and this is the tedious part. So you need to peel away the background. So anything that's not the actual words that I want to keep, I have to peel away. And that even means going in the inside of all of your O's and your A's and D's and all of those letters and pulling out those teeny tiny little dots. So I am going to weed away while I watch something on my iPad. Thank you. 
So once the weeding process is done, you're going to use transfer tape. So that's what this is right now. And I still had my nails done for my wedding and they put little tips on them. So I am having such a tough time peeling things right now. I kind of can't wait to get them off. But you put the transfer tape on top of everything that you just weeded away when you have only your words remaining. Once the transfer tape is on, then I'm gonna cut everything into individual labels so I can put them on my containers. I had most of my spices already done. I did that when I was in my last apartment, but I did have one like this minced onion where I just taped on the label from the original container so I didn't forget what it was. And I just printed one more label to have it match the rest of them. And I'm gonna stick that one on right now. And I don't know if you can see, there are three of the spice containers that still have silver tops. I bought spice containers that had those tops on them and I ended up not liking them. So I've been slowly replacing them with white tops from spice jars that I've been buying from Target. So I just need to buy three more spice jars and then I will have a full, beautiful, complete set. onto the OXO containers. I'm just gonna sift through and figure out which labels belong to which products because it is white on white. It's a little difficult to see, but I can hold them up to the light and see what they are. Now onto the OXO containers. That's usually what I use to decant most of my products. And I'm just going to one by one label each of them. It is a slow process especially because I tried out a new type of transfer tape and it's a strong grip transfer tape. Big mistake, it's so hard to peel off. I like my old transfer tape better, so I will be going back to that. This is also a good time for me to replenish some products, so my flour needed to be topped off and I happened to have some flour in the back stock, so I filled it up. So take me on a trip. Chip, chip, nah, chip, chip, chip. Oh, I flick the switch, kill the lights. I always like to clean off the surface before I apply any label. That just makes sure there, there's no air bubbles, but it also makes sure that things stay on really well and don't peel off.
So all of these containers I've been working on so far are my baking products and I'm going to use the top shelf of my pantry to kind of be my baking zone. Now I chose the top shelf because of course baking is not something that I'm doing on a daily basis, but I do bake quite often and I can reach the top shelf of this pantry pretty easily so I know that it's something that I can grab on my own without having to get a step stool every single time. When you're coming up with your own pantry plan, it is important to think about zones like that. So you wanna think about having things at eye level and within arm's reach that you use often and then things that are higher up that you might not use as often or things low down that are more bulk items or large items that might not be supported on a shelf. It also helps to have these zones to know when you're cooking exactly where to go. If you have spices, you know, over to the left side and the right side and the top shelf and the bottom shelf, it's gonna be really hard when you're cooking and you're trying to find what you're looking for. So think about the types of foods that you have in your pantry. Some people like to separate by lunch items and dinner items. For me, lunch foods and dinner foods all kind of blend into one, so I don't really do that. But I have my baking you'll see on the top row, then I have all my dry goods. Below that I have my spices and I will have my oils there and so on. You're looking at me so cold. Get over yourself, are you for real? Why are you looking at me so cold? One's love is now we're enemies. You try to make yourself feel better by taking me down. Once I fell, but now I'm strong, I'm ready for the rematch. Now in that second shelf, I could do these containers three levels deep, but I'm trying to think about how practical this will be for me. Now if I have OXO containers that are three levels in, getting to that back one is gonna be really difficult. So if I have it only two levels deep, I can just slide the one in front of it out of the way, grab the one behind it, and it's really not that big of an inconvenience for me. Dime, cuántas veces me volviste de mente. Ahora sin ti estoy tan solo, no es fácil. Te quiero, baby, hasta que nazca el sol, hasta que nazca el sol. Dime, cuántas veces me volviste de mente. Ahora sin ti estoy tan solo, no es fácil. Te quiero, baby, hasta que nazca el sol, hasta que nazca el sol. Quiero, baby, 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 Ahora sí que estoy tan solo, no es fácil. Te quiero, baby, hasta que nazca el sol, hasta que nazca el sol. Baby, 
Ahora sin ti estoy tan solo, no es fácil Te quiero, baby, hasta que nazca el sol Hasta que nazca el sol Dame tu amor, dame tu amor Dame tu amor, tu amor, tu amor I'm a big fan of non-dairy milks, so I do buy them in bulk at Costco. And I tend to always have both coconut milk and almond milk on hand, which I have plenty of both right now. I stocked up a few weeks ago. So I had them just kind of sitting at the bottom and I decided to take advantage of that dead space on the left-hand side of the pantry, way up high, it does go in a little bit past the doors. And so I didn't wanna slide my baking goods there, but I felt like this was the perfect spot to put some of my almond milk and coconut milk because I only need to go back there every few weeks to replenish and stick another one in the fridge. So onto my oils, I have decanted these as well. That's something I did in my last apartment and I created new labels that match the spice jars just so I don't have three different styles of fonts in my pantry, but I was kind of exhausted and I'm just gonna leave it for now. Maybe another day I will have the energy to replace them. For now, I think they still look great. So I put all of my decanted oils together, a couple of extra little oils in the middle, and then when you rotate it, I will have all of my cooking sprays. And look how pretty that looks. Next up, I add some pancake mixes, then I have my travel mugs and my water bottles. You give me a sign. Now this is the large size Lazy Susan. It easily fits my protein powders, that giant thing of honey from Costco. I'm gonna put my salt and pepper, my baking powder, and some toothpicks. Think that I'm addicted to this can't resist to be a little risky and go for it cause I want you close. I'm so exposed when you're keeping me wondering. You know I do anything to be in your arms again. So give me a sign. Believe it or not, these plastic drawers are from college. And I do kind of want to upgrade these and use some alpha units like the ones that I use under my bathroom sink. But honestly, we're trying to be conscious of how much money we're spending. And putting these pretty little labels on these plastic drawers, I think just kind of brings it up a notch. And I really don't mind them. And I think we're gonna hold off on upgrading for a little bit. Again, when we moved in, I just kind of threw things in here. So I wanna pull everything out and make sure that it's nice and neat and tidy in these drawers and the labels actually apply. Since I didn't have labels before, I wanna make sure it's all sorted properly. Say you think about it too. When the lights go out and there's no doubt that I should be with. I should be we've been on and off again and again I don't know which way we're going no control you push me then you pull me back in mm -mm -mm. we've been on and off again and again I don't know which way we're going no control you push me then you pull me back in so give me a sign give me a sign So it might look like I have quite a few sponges and I definitely do. This is more sponges than anybody needs, but I definitely get some products sent to me for free to try out. So I am still keeping those and holding on to them. I know I'll get to use them eventually, so I have an entire drawer of sponges and little sink scrubber brushes. Just give me one more. Now these produce bins I just got from Target, they're some of the only new purchases that I got for this pantry, 
and I do really like them. I think they look really cute there and they match all of the white and look nice and simple. Okay guys, here is the final reveal. As I mentioned, there are a couple of last minute things that I need to fix in the pantry, but overall, I'm really happy with it. I think it's gonna be super functional, and of course, I love the way that it looks. So if you guys liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. I really wanna share a bunch of different organizing projects around the rest of the apartment. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for more, hit that notification bell, and until next time, I will see you guys later.